How does Rural Ontario inspire author Lori Ray Hill? Let's find out. But before we do, I would please like everyone to hit that subscribe button on the bottom of your screen so you can keep up with the latest author interviews and behind the book stories. This week's episode of Crystal's All About Books, I'm so excited to have author Lori Ray Hill with me. Lori is a playwright and an author, and she has recently retired from her role in vision loss rehabilitation, where she supported people with vision loss to grasp and navigate their worlds. Her debut novel, Paper Stones was published by Anana Publications. And here's what her novel is about. From the moment she holds her baby niece, Rose is on a mission. This child is not going to be a victim of the family's curse, which is sexual abuse. So Rose joins a support group to prevent this from happening. And this is where the story begins. Welcome to All About Books, Lori. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Well, we're going to jump right in today with the question. And my first question, Lori, is what inspired you to write Paper Stones? Well, <laughs> I do share a history with Rose. It's fiction, but that's where it started. And the thing, too, was that I learned that that doesn't have to be a doom for life for anybody. I learned that people can feel better even if they've had trauma, any kind of trauma. Um, and that seemed like big news. I wanted to share it. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, you've... And to your point, you've tap, tackled the subject matter of sexual abuse, which, which is a dark subject matter, but you've written a book that's really warm and it's humorous and certainly charming. So how were you able to balance, like to create this light amongst all the darkness? Well, you know, the, the, the way that the main person speaks Rose, and we'll talk maybe a little bit more about rural Ontario, but when somehow when I heard her yakking away in this local vernacular that I felt at home with, because it's the way lots of folks talk around here, there was something so warm and fun and humorous and gritty and just companionable in Rose. I felt like she was going to keep me company and keep other people company when they approached this subject. And that just somehow, and then her best friend somehow popped up and her best friend is this nut who has visions and sees things and lives on these crazy daydreams. And that her name's Josie and she's a lot of fun too. Um, I'm gonna read you about Josie later, but the two of them, this gritty down to earth, funny person and this daydream and wacky, great, <laughs> silly person just lit it up for me and, and gave me a feeling of, you know, this could be fun, believe it or not. Yeah. And to, and to that point, like Josie is a character totally intrigued me. Like just this whole idea of a psychic in the midst of everything. Where did you get the idea to write Josie as a psychic? It totally works, but how did that <laughs> Oh, golly, I don't even know. I guess I've known a few, you know, and you think, how did they ever know that? You know, some people just, it seems to be a thing. People really exist who kind of know things. And I thought, oh boy, isn't that interesting? <laughs> and what would happen? If, and you know, too, I think for me, the role of imagination in healing yes. is big. If you can't picture a better world, how are you going to get there? So there's this person who pictures everything and pictures a wonderful place where they could end up. And it was important to me that somebody can imagine a better place. It helps everybody in the book get out of where they are and get to a better place. Yeah, so imagination. Yeah. yeah. So from the get-go, 
I was, oh gosh, I was rooting for Rose and for Jenny and, and all of the women in the book. Like I couldn't read fast enough, Lori. I was just whipping through because I wanted to know what was going to happen to these women on their journey of healing. And you've, you've done a lot of research about the psychology of healing. Can you speak about the shifts or the paper stones in Rose's journey? Yeah, I really have worked hard to learn and to make the psychology in the book real. I had some advisors and I tried hard because I, that was such an interesting thing that I learned that you, and I've learned it in my own life first, but that, that those little tiny shifts in how we look at things, yeah. one little shifty, tiny change in how we see things and then another and then another. That was why, you know, the stepping stone idea and Rose makes stepping stones out of paper, which is where the paper stones comes from. But, but yeah, just the, the thought that psychology seems to work that way, that people don't get better all at once. They get better a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. And while you were um, writing Rose's healing journey, was it hard for you to, to, to go along with her? Like, did you want to speed up her healing process and heal her right away? <laughs> yeah. That's a hard thing, right? And those, and also those times where people slip back, yeah. they're so difficult. You think, oh, go Rose, you're almost there. And then, oh, she screams yeah. up again, you know, and she's back I and you think, oh, please. But I, that's so real. And I, I really hope this will help somebody. So I wanted it to be the way it is which is slow and hard and bumpy and you know if I speeded it up it wouldn't I think have been very useful to anybody who was actually trying themselves to make their way along or somebody who's just interested and would like to understand why it takes other people so long yeah yeah you know you got to be awfully patient with any kind of growth I think mm -hmm. now as a writer you know, we're known to have moments of doubt, you know, be it our characters or our storyline. Did you have any doubts when you were writing your book? Oh, heavens, I'm always doubting everything. Yeah, I mean, sure. And of course, as you say, that's a tricky subject and people, you know, when I first put out feelers many years ago about this topic, I was discouraged. People were not going to hear it at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we've come a long way as a society that we can publish this book and people don't faint when they find out what it's about and you know <laughs> uh, that's important because it's got to be talked about before people can get any place so yeah um, of course I doubted whether people would be okay with that topic and whether I would be okay standing up talking about it um, but yeah here we are <laughs> nobody's everybody's okay and we're doing it and I think it's it's a better world because we're talking about this right now absolutely absolutely um I'm just looking at my questions here so what are you currently working on what's your next project oh this is fun you know you mentioned at the beginning I, I used to work in vision loss rehabilitation yes. So that's where I am right now. I'm thinking about some of the wonderful, incredible people that I knew who couldn't see yeah. and found their way through the world. Um, it's, ah. yeah. oh, so it, will it be another fiction based on this inspiration then? Yes, yes, it will, yeah. Oh. And it's very technically interesting for anybody who's a writer listening to this because of course a main character who can't see, you have to write without any visuals in your book. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that, that it would be a challenging, I would imagine. For That's sure. interesting, yeah. Yeah, and how far along are you? Mm, I think I might have about a quarter of that done. You know, it's hard to guess. I write and rewrite and rewrite forever, yeah. so heaven knows how long it'll take me to finish, but that's, it's a good start. Oh, good. Well, we'll look forward to reading that. And Lori, a great big thank you for agreeing today to come on this episode of All About Books. I so enjoyed meeting you and learning more about your book. And uh, for everyone else out there, if I will put links down below in the description box so you can go to Lori's website, learn more about her or picture or picture help or purchase a copy of 
Paper Stones. And it is a fantastic read. I, like I said, I couldn't put it down. I was whipping through it because I wanted to know what happened to Rose, Jenny, and all of the friends that they have. So please come back next week because I have Carl Souls and we will, be, we will be speaking about her book, Dancing with Chairs in the Music House. Thank you, Laura.